Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a second. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Good Welcome afternoon. to another lecture given by the Douglasville class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and his eternal purpose operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kelly, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Douglasville branch was established in 2014. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to school officials. The president is Dr. Jamie O'Dyer, and the vice president is Dr. Dotson Wallace. In this school, we use the true correct original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. And the name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that the creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of our Heavenly Father in his son's name. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on our chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of the charts to show you that everything on the charts are within a cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within a pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took one shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a superincorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of his name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. We call it the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court that goes around about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. 
In this school, we show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the threefold structure and function of the tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find the find the note. My apologies. I'm doing two different things here. So please forgive me. To help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the power la powers laden in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. At this time, we'll have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Patrick Latortu. Then we'll have our scripture lesson read Proverbs, the sixth chapter by Dr. Carol Dye. May we have our prayer. Let us all bow our hearts and minds and truly give thanks unto our Heavenly Father Yahweh through His Son Yahshua the Messiah, who will, that has allowed us to once again meet together in this Zoom, in this Zoom situation. And we all hope and hope and pray that He will keep us to to cause us to endure all of these things that are happening on the earth plane and within our lives and so on and so forth so that we may give glory unto his blessed name and with these few words i say hallelujah hallelujah good evening our scripture reading will be proverbs the sixth chapter i will be reading from the holy name bible containing the holy name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compare with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trena, the Scripture Research Association. Proverbs, the sixth chapter, begins on page 766. My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the land of thy friend, go humble thyself and make sure thy friend will release thee. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a robe from the hand of the hunter as, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When thou, when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as a armed man. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a forward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, 
He teaches with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart. He devises mischief continually. He soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things doth Yahweh hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, the hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and him that soweth discord among brethren. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou wakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp. And the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman, lust not after her beauty in thy heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burnt? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burnt? So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief. If he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry, but if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom. Neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. I just read for you Proverbs, the sixth chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So we want to thank everybody for tuning in. And we want to thank everyone that has joined us within the Zoom class. And we have visiting with us our visiting brethren, which we love having them, um, Dr. Bonnie Schneider in the art court class. Also, we have visiting with us um, Dr. Patrick Latortu, Northside Chicago. So I want to welcome everybody in the bonds of peace. All right. Now, our scripture readers for today will be uh, Dr. Dotson Wallace and Dr. Carol Dye. And for our first speaker, we would like to call on Dr. Rob Faulkner. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm happy and glad to be here and uh, to testify to the things that I've learned about Yahshua by coming to these classes on a regular basis. And I just want to start out first off that I do appreciate the people that do take time to uh, set up these Zoom classes. <clears throat> in this time of the pandemic so that we can have class and continue to learn and um, put our faith and learn more about Yahshua so that we can have faith in, in Yahshua and uh, realize um, what's going on. Um, uh, with that, I um, let's get uh, John 17 and 3. And uh, one of the things that um, has really impressed me um, by coming to class is this should be a learning experience and we should be here to learn and, and uh, help somebody and teach about Yash the Messiah and um, it will do your soul some good. So let's get this John 17 and 3 and we'll go from there. John 17 and 3. 
And this is life eternal, that they might know that thou only art the true El, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. Oh, okay. Have... Let, let's, um, I'm, I'm going to have you go back, and then I'm going to interrupt you. But it's, it's, it talks here about this is life eternal. And one of the things that we know is, um, and there used to be a, a joke, I think it came from Ben Franklin, that there was two guarantees, and that was um, taxes and um, dying. And uh, so that we know from a physical standpoint that our flesh can't live forever. And, uh, but we're talking about life eternal or, or a man's soul um, can, can uh, go on and live um, forever. So let's, let's start that and I'll interrupt you. I know it's a little bit hard sometimes, but um, go ahead and, and read that again, please. Third verse. And this is life eternal. Now this and is life eternal. What is life eternal? See, and a lot of people, before coming to class and stuff, because of the way we most of us have come up in Christian Christian dome, um, as Dr. Kelly would um, uh, uh, express it, or Christian dome, is um, they think that um, life eternal is going to heaven, and we're going to walk on gold streets, and we're going to play golf and whatever. I don't like golf, but whatever you like, that's what you're going to do. Um, but look, this, this is what the uh, definition, and this is a prayer the Ash was offering up be just before um, he's getting put on the cross. He says, this is life eternal, Read That they might know that thou only art the true L. See, that they might know the only true L, see, Read And Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. And the Ash of the Messiah whom thou hast sent. Now that's what life eternal is. And that's what we're doing down here. And this is not a church. You hear it in the moderation. This is not a church. It's a school. And a school is where you learn. And one of the biggest tricks the devil has is what he does is, and you, you go to Christian religions and different religions, what he uses is he says, you can't know anything about Yahweh or, the, or God or the creator. And that's not true. Yahweh would not say that this is life eternal and give you no way of knowing him. Now, there is a way of knowing him, and um, that's one of the things that uh, this teaching is not a product of a man's mind. Yahweh um, came to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in a divine vision and revelation and showed him the things that hopefully are being showed in this school. See, they're painted on these charts. So let's go to, um, uh, and what we did, what he seen in that vision is how to come to a knowledge and understanding of the purpose of Yahweh. Now, one of the things that we're going to talk a little bit about Yahshua in this gospel, and one of the things that um, uh, um, we were taught is that if we wanted to know anything about Jesus, um, that you would have to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And that's not the way that um, Yahweh had laid it out. Now let's go to um, um, uh, uh, Luke 24 and 27 and John 5 and 39. And um, um, with that 24 and, and 27, I also want 44 and Matthew 5, 17. Luke 24, 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, what this is, is this is Yahshua is after he's went through his death, burial, resurrection. And that's what I'm going to focus on um, tonight. The, I'm not going to be up here very long, but I want to focus on this death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua. Because it can, the power... Um, in that death, burial, resurrection can give you the ability or get, um, have the ability to save your soul from destruction so that your soul can live eternally. So what you have here is Yahshua, he's went through his death, burial, resurrection, and he, he's um, resurrected a spiritual body, see, and he's walking on this road to Emmaus, and there's two men there, and they're all upset because Yahshua, when he walked around in the flesh, was their comfort, see. And look, that should tell you a little something about today is if you want comfort you need to go to Yahshua the Messiah and, and we're not going to get it but you can read in in John how that he was the comforter or he he is the comforter see and that's why we want to know something about Yahshua because he can give us comfort you're 
this physical creation is not going to give you comfort. It's you're going to have an achy knee like I have today, or or you're not going to be able to pay a bill or something. It's never going to give you comfort, but Yahshua will. Now what what they're doing is he's died and now he's resurrected, and these two men on the road to Emmaus are um, are all upset that he's he's gone, and so he appears to them in a spiritual body and they don't recognize him. And what he does is he begin and go ahead and read that now, please. Forty-four first. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while can, can you read, I was yet with you. Excuse me, can you read 27 first and 27, then we'll skip back? 27 first. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets. Now what he did, see, now they're they're upset that he's not there to comfort them, but now he's he's appearing to them. And he begins at Moses, see the Old Testament part of the Bible. And Moses contributed to writing the law, the first five books of the Bible. So he begins at Moses and all the prophets. Now the prophets would be the books from Joshua all the way up to Malachi. And look, this is very important for us to know and understand if we're going to get a, an accurate understanding of Yahshua the Messiah, that the way to come to a knowledge and understanding of Yahshua is through the law and the prophets. See, and beginning of Moses and all the prophets, go ahead and read. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, he just told them a few things about some things back there um, about himself. That's not what it says. He expounded unto them. See, he went back into the law and the prophets and expounded unto them the things concerning himself. See, and I believe it's is it a couple of verses up where it says, Oh, fools and slow of heart to believe? Is it like 25? Yes. Can you read that, please? 25th verse. Then he said unto them, All fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought See, not the most See now, old fools and slow of heart to um, not believe all that the prophets have spoken. See now, what Yahshua, that's telling Yahshua's life story. Uh, can you hold your finger there and run over to Matthew 5 and 17? Because I want to come back to 44. Because see, the law and the prophets are telling the story of Yahshua the Messiah. See, Moses wrote of Yahshua, and we're going to get that. I want to show you, and then we're going to go back and look at this. Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. See, now Yahshua says, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. And you'll see if you have a red letter edition, this is in red. Yahshua was speaking this. And he says, think not that I come to destroy the law and the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now the word fulfill means to end or complete. See, in Christianity, that mystery of iniquity has got everybody believing that he came in to institute a Christian way of life. No, he came in to fulfill what he set back up, set up with the Jews back there in the law of the prophets. See, he's fulfilling. And so when you see Yahshua doing something, what he's doing is he's fulfilling the things that are written back there that Moses wrote and all the prophets. He's fulfilling things, and we're going to show you that here in a few minutes. Now can we go back over to Luke uh, um, 24 and um, um, read 44, please. Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you. See, now these are the words that I see. He was their comfort when he was with them. And the, he's, ex, he's expressing the same words, see, after he's resurrected from the dead. And these were the same words that I spoke to you when I was yet with you. Read. That all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and see, in the all, Psalms concerning me. See, all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms concerning Yahshua. See, the things that are written in the Old Testament part of the Bible are the things that are written about Yahshua the Messiah. That's not commonly known out in the world or Christendom. See, we sometimes take things that we learn in this class for granted, and sometimes we leave them things because we don't we, we, we think we understand them. See, but they, they're what's going to help other people and help us and give us comfort. That's why we must 
And Dr. Kinley in, in several places would say, the rules of the game are you must stay in the law and prophets and show how Yash was fulfilling the law and prophecy. And you'll come to a knowledge and understanding and see a spiritual fulfillment, see, or how it, it, it operates today. Now let's go to um, John 5 and 39. And then um, I want to demonstrate how this law of prophets works, see. John 5 and 39. Ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. See, now you search the scriptures, and, and um, um, you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. See, what scriptures is he talking about? Now, when he's making that statement, John isn't written yet. So he's not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, because they're not even written yet. See, he's talking about the Old Testament part of the Bible. Go ahead and read, please. 40th verse. But ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men. See, you don't I come to Yahshua that you might have life. See, and here's the thing about this great gospel or this great teaching because this is the greatest teaching on the face of the world the face of the earth see is is um we can show you and prove to you how that you can come to a knowledge and understanding of yashua and you don't have to believe or be dependent on a man see you can go back into the law and the prophets and know yashua for yourself see go ahead and read but i know you that ye have not the love of Elohim in you. See, the I, ones that are not teaching according to the law of the prophets, they don't have the love of, of Yahshua in them. See, go ahead and read. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. Now Let look, him... we'll just take a little side road here where Yahshua says, I come in my Father's name. See, the Father's name being Yahweh, Y-A-H-W-E-H. -E see, and he comes in his Father's name, see, and you'll find out that it's Yahshua, see? So it's, and Yah is a short form of Yahweh. So what you have with, um, can we go to the names chart, please? Um, what you have is with that name is, it's got to be Yah something. So you got, um, see how you got Yahweh? Yah, Y-A-H-W-E-H. -E well, he comes in his father's name. So it's Yah something. So um, you'll find out that it's Yahshua and Shua comes from a word that in, in Hebrew that means um, liberation or salvation. And you'll find out that when uh, the angel over, we're not going to get it, but in Matthew 1 and 21, an angel comes to Joseph and tells Joseph to take Mary as his wife, that she's um, um, uh, been conceived of the Holy Spirit, and that they should call his name Yahshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. See he how he comes in his father's name? And look, when a person doesn't come in their father's name, they call them a bastard, see? But you don't, with Yahweh, see, Yahshua comes in his father's name. Now, if you look down below, you got Lord, Jehovah, and God, and Jesus Christ. There's no similarities in, in, in any of them. See, they're a bastardization of that true name of Yahweh and Yahshua. And look, there is no salvation but in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. That's why you've got to come to a knowledge and understanding of Yahshua and understand that name. And see that power in that name. Now go ahead and read, please. I am come in my father's name, and ye receive me not. Let another come in his own name. Him ye will receive. See, I'll... now, if another comes in his own name, him you will receive. And you got the whole world receiving all the things but the name of Yahshua. See, Allah, Jesus Christ. You got you got people in the world thinking that Dr. Kinley, they're saved in the name of Dr. Kinley. But it's, you're really saved in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And that's what's in the Bible. And that's what the founder of this organization said. See, he said, you are not saved in the name of Dr. Kinley. And there's a transcript out that actually, um, uh, I think the name of it is you're not saved in the name of, or you're saved in the name, that's what it is. You're saved in the name of Yahshua. But he puts, when he thought, you're not saved in Allah, you're not saved in Jesus. You're not, and he names a whole bunch of different names, and he says even Dr. Kinley, because you're only saved in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Go ahead and read, please. 44th verse. 
How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from Elohim only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for, Mo, for he wrote of me. Now this is what Yahshua said. If you would believe Moses, you would believe me. Because Moses wrote of me. See, now that's what we need to see or understand how that Moses wrote of Yahshua the Messiah. Now you're going to find out that Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So what we want to do is let's go back and I'm going to demonstrate some things of how Moses wrote of Yahshua. See, so you can see how that we can come to a knowledge and understanding of Yahshua and maybe see how that it operates with you spiritually um, um, in, a, in a reality. So let's go to the first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1, 1 through 2, please. Genesis, the first chapter and the first verse. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Now look, we read in the beginning, and this is what the translators have done, because you, you, you this class is the most, this is the greatest class that anybody could ever come to. And you'll, if you continue to come to class, you're going to find out that Genesis is not the first verse, verse, first um, book of the Bible. See, um, Exodus, there's parts of Exodus should be in there before this Genesis is, but you, we're not going to get into it tonight. But when he says in the beginning, um, Elohim created the heavens and the earth, it was in the beginning of Moses' vision. That's the only way that Moses could write down what was in Genesis is he had a vision from Yahweh. And he said, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Read. And the earth was without form and void. See, now that the earth was without form and void. So would you say that the earth was in a chaotic state? And if you look at the 40 plate chart, you can see some of the things that Dr. Kinley explains that are in the Bible. And he has a, a plate. And shows how the, and I can't remember the name of the plate, but it shows that there's chaos there. So you got chaos there. Go ahead and read. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. So we have chaos, and there was darkness there too, see? So you have darkness on the face of the deep. Read. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. Now that spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. So what you have is, You've got um, right here the first verse of the Bible. You've got um, how that the earth was without form and void, or there was chaos, and there was darkness, and that spirit moved upon the face of the waters. Now let's go into the um, prophets, see, which the prophets are the books from Joshua to Malachi, and let's see if we can find that same principle operating that's written in the prophets. See, now we've got to remember also that's talking about something about Yahshua, and he's going to fulfill that. So let's go to Job, Job 9, 6 through 8, please. Job 9, 6. Which shaketh the earth out of her, her place, and the pillars thereof tremble. Okay, so you got the, I'm sorry, um, it's hard. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I don't mean to, but see, which shaketh the earth out of her place. Isn't there some chaos there? See, when the earth is shaking, and look, they have earthquakes and stuff like that. And there's a lot of chaos if you've ever seen, some, well, if anybody's ever even been in one. But if you see the movies, you'll see that there's a lot of chaos. So the earth is shaking out of her place. So you got chaos, read. And the pillars thereof tremble, which commandeth the sun, and it riseth not. Now, commandeth the sun, and rise not. What do you have when the, the sun is commanded to rise not? Is you have darkness. See, the same principles that are in the first verses of the Bible, chaos and darkness. See, the sun riseth not, darkness. Read. And sealeth up the stars, which alone spreadeth out the heavens and treadeth upon the waters of the sea. See, now, now he treadeth on the waters of the sea. See? So don't you have that spirit, see, or that spirit of Elohim um, treading upon the waters of the sea, or you have that walking on waters, see. And now this is all t telling a story about Yahshua Messiah. Now let's go over to Matthew, the 14th chapter, please. 
Matthew you know, report. before we do that, let's go to Psalms 29. I think it is. If it's not, we'll move on. But I think it's 29 and 3. Psalm, Psalm 29 and 3. The voice of Yahweh is upon the waters. The L of glory thundereth. Yahweh is upon many waters. Okay, we'll, we'll, re, we'll go come back to that. But let's go to Matthew 14, um, 24, please. Matthew 14, 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Now, see, you've got this ship, and it's it tossed with waves, and the wind was contrary. Wouldn't you say that's some chaos there? And if anybody's been on a cruise where the waters are rough, there's a lot of chaos. The, the ship's moving back and forth, or on a ship, fishing trip. So you got chaos there. Go ahead and read, please. And in the fourth watch of the night. See, now we have chaos, just like we did in the... In the um, Genesis and in Job. Now, Yahshua's in this is at the time of Yahshua and Matthew. See, and it's the fourth watch of the night. So, you got darkness there, chaos and darkness. See, because he's fulfilling what was written in Genesis and in Job. Read. Yahshua went unto them walking on the sea. Now, Yahshua went unto them walking on the sea. See, and they always make this big story in the world how that Yahshua. Or Jesus, they say, walked on waters. Well, the reason that he walked on the waters is because of what's written back there in the Law and the Prophets. So you can know Yahshua for an assurity, see, because you go back there and you see what he is doing back there, back in the Law and the Prophets. And then Yahshua comes in and fulfills it when he's manifest in the flesh. Go ahead and read, please. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And oh, see, cry. see, just like back there in Genesis, how that the spirit moved upon the face of the waters. See, they're troubled, and they say it is a spirit. So you got Yahshua walking on the waters. See so that spirit moving upon the face of the waters. Now look, what you have here is um, um, through this great gospel or this teaching, you can receive that Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua the Messiah. See in. Um, um, that, you got to continue to come back to class. But let's go back to um, Psalms 29 and 3. And I want to show you how the reality of this is. See, what he set up is so that you can see how that, that Holy Spirit can be manifested you in the flesh. Before we get that, let's go to, um, I think it's John 14. And in, in my, in my father's house are many mansions. Yeah. Um. 14 and 2. Um, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now he's point picking out where he says, where I am, see at that moment, where I am, you may be also. See, and he's got to go through that death, burial, resurrection, and then um, um, come back and, and um, be in his resurrection for 40 days, ascend unto the Father, and see, then um, you can receive that Holy Spirit. Now, wh what he's saying is, where I am, you may be also. That's That Holy Spirit or that Spirit being manifest him in the flesh. And it's possible for you to have that Holy Spirit. See, now, let's go back to um, uh, Psalms 29 and 3 and uh, read that, please. Psalm 29, 3. The voice of Yahweh is upon the waters. Now, the voice of Yahweh is upon the waters. See, now you'll find out that you're, you're about 70, 75% water. See, now look, this teaching, see, yes, it comes through. Um, different um, vessels that um, have come to now a knowledge and understanding of Yahweh, and hopefully it's not it's not of our own volition. It's really 
It's something that Yahshua showed us that with witnesses, and we want you to see the witnesses, and we're trying to point out the witnesses. But it's Yahweh talking to you. See? Now, um, go ahead and read that, please. The Elohim of glory thundereth. See, the Elohim of glory thundereth. Read. Yahweh is upon many waters. See, Yahweh is upon many waters. Read. The voice of Yahweh is powerful. See, now that voice of Yahweh is powerful. See, now look, you're 70, 75% water, and you hear this great gospel, and you'll find out that words and water go together. Well, these words, see, the, the uh, power of life is in the tongue. These words can deliver your soul, see, or our, our souls. That's what, see, some of us have been delivered. that can be delivered from that darkness. See, and that spirit moving upon the face of the waters is that physical body. It's possible to have that Holy Spirit put right within you now, today, so that you can um, um, come to, uh, to know Yahshua. See, you can have that Holy Spirit manifested in your physical body. And that's when he said, where I am, you may be also. It's after he fulfilled that law of prophets, see, and um, ascended unto the Father, and, and, and um, um, uh, I'll pour that Holy Spirit. Now let's go to, uh, quickly, I'm only going to be up a few more minutes. I want get to get the gospel a little bit. Can we go to um, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1? Because really what we're doing is, and before we do that, let's get Acts 28, um, I think it's 28, 24. Um, it talks about when they appointed Paul a day. And then let's get um, uh, 1 Corinthians 15. And uh, uh, one, one through four. I think it's Acts 28. Just a minute, I'll look real quick. Where they appointed Paul a day. Um, yeah, 23, 28, 23, please. Acts 28, 23. Acts 28 and 23. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging. To whom now this is Paul. The, this is Paul preaching in the same age we're in today. Go ahead and read, please. To whom he expounded and testified of the kingdom of Yahweh, persuading them concerning Yahshua, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning to evening. See, he persuaded them concerning not concerning uh, the Ford pickup truck or he con concerning Yahshua the Messiah out of the law of Moses in the Psalms in the pr prophets see that's what Paul he preached the same Yahshua that we're preaching out of the law of prophets and fulfillment now let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 15 uh, 1 please and then can we have the elementary chart also please Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Now, this is Paul, the apostle, and he's saying, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. See, the good news, see, and, and you know, we throw, before we come into class, we throw that word gospel around, you know, when we're telling a story or something. That's the gospel truth, see. Well, this is the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah that has the ability or the power to save a soul, see. And Paul's declaring this gospel read which i preached unto you see and he preached this gospel unto them read which also ye have received read and wherein ye stand so you've received it and wherein you stand and look some people have left this gospel and you'll read we're not going to get it i think it's in colossians or ephesians it talks about if any other man or or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel than what we preach, let him be accursed. Well, some of us have stuck into this gospel, and we're going to stick to it. And some people might say, is that all you know? Yep, that's all I know, is I know this great gospel of Yahshua the Messiah that has the ability to save a soul. See, read. By which also ye are saved. Oh, <laughs> see, he points out how this, this gospel, um, you can be saved in this gospel. 
And that's what we're talking about. We, that's why we get on these classes and preach this gospel is because we want you to be saved. See, we want to be saved. See, and it's, it helps us and it help, hopefully it helps other people, see, to be saved or so that you can um, have your faith in Yahshua the Messiah. See, it doesn't matter what man it is. The men are going to let us down. But Yahshua the Messiah will never let us down. See, read. If you keep in memory. What I preached unto you. See now, if you, keep in, in if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, and this gospel, see, that's why we have to continue to come to class. And I, I am very thankful that we can have Zoom classes so that um, we can get on here. Because look, if we went months and months and months and months, we'd forget about, you know. And I'm not saying because look, we had a testimony in our class. Somebody had, hadn't been here in years, and he said, "I never forgot that name Yahweh and stuff." But you know what? His, his also his testimony is, I want to hear the basic things of this class, these things that we can understand about Yahshua the Messiah. Because we realize, see, Yahshua is our comforter. Go ahead and read, please. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. See, now he delivered unto him first of all what he received. Read. How that Yahshua the Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures see now it says how yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures what are them scriptures he's talking about the law and the prophets and i'll tell you if you don't get anything from this class except this today you get that the law is the first five books of the bible and the prophets are the books from joshua to malachi and them are the books that tell you the story about yahshua the messiah and he came in to fulfill it go ahead and read please and that he was buried. See, and that he was he, rose, he was buried and he rose again the third day, according, according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. See, now that's what Paul called the gospel. Now, can you bring up the elementary chart, please? Okay. Now, what we have is, and Dr. Kinley set these plates up, and I'll tell you. We've been studying the charts, and I'm not going to get into it tonight, but you'll, you'll see that um, you've got um, Adam and Eve in the first plate, Noah and his family, the preparation of the ark in the second plate. You got uh, Abraham and Isaac, and then you got the migration of the children of Israel. You got the Melchizedek priesthood, Abraham and Isaac. Um, you got the children of Israel. You got the tabernacle pattern. You've got the baptism and ministry of Yahshua and then the unity of the spirit. And you'll, if you go to the other charts, we, we, we won't, but if you look at um, the bottom of the Moses chart, you're going to find out that you, you got the same events taking place on the bottom of the uh, Moses chart or on the bottom of the covenants chart on these charts. And you can even show how the ages line up um, on the ages chart. You got the dispensations. You'll have um, Adam and Noah. But look, what we want to do now is we want to talk about the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua according to the scriptures. See, the Old Testament part of the Bible. And you're going to find out, we, um, if you look on that tombstone, we're not going to get the verses because I, I want to get down real quick. But you'll find out that um, Adam, Yahweh told Adam when he touched that fruit, he would die that day. See, and you'll find out that on that tombstone, the verses on that tombstone, Get the uh, at a Genesis where Adam died 930 years, he lived in the flesh, and then uh, you've got verses in there that talks about how Yahweh's time uh, uh, one day is equal a thousand years. So Adam lived 930 years, or a thousand years would be a one day. So he he died in that day, or prior to the thousand years, and see what happened is. He died spiritually instantaneously when he touched that fruit. His eyes were closed to the spirit and open to the flesh, see? But the flesh, see, is slower. It takes time for that flesh to catch up. And it took 930 years, then he died physically. So you got a principle of a death, see? Now, when he's out here in the creation, there's thorns and thistles, and he's buried in, and uh, he's got to play in his own garden, and he's buried in, in that creation. So you got death, see? And, and, and that death was passed on to all men. See, death, buried, see, and then through childbearing, and it's right on the chart, you can, you can read it, that um, he might be saved. So Five Adam won't be resurrected. Minutes. Five okay, minutes. Thank you. thank you. 
So you got a death, a burial, a resurrection. Point out Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection. Then you got Noah and his family, see? And what you got is Noah, see? What's he doing is he's um, um, preaching, hey, Yahweh, the end of all flesh just came before me. Yahweh told Noah this in a vision. He's preaching, You look, you got to uh, help build the ark and get in the ark. See, he's preaching death, see? that They're buried in the ark, burial, and then um, they, they um, uh, get in the ark and it rains and they're resurrected. Death, burial, resurrection. And that ark is a type of Yahshua the Messiah. That's how they, they had to get in that ark. See, just like we've got to be in Yahshua the Messiah. See, to, um, and that was an end of a world. Just like now, see, this this world is not going to last forever. we got to be in Yahshua when th this is consumed with fire. So you got death, burial, resurrection, point out Yahshua. Then you got Abraham and Isaac, see? And, and Abraham is told off of his son. His son is dead and buried in his mind. So you got death and burial, see? And then uh, Yahweh says, um, Abraham, I know that you're going to uh, have sons an angel. I know that you, you would kill your son and you don't have to kill him. See, so he's resurrected in Abraham's mind, death, burial, resurrection. And you've got that death, burial, resurrection in Abraham's mind, just like Adam was dead and buried, see, in his mind, see? And the same thing is, Yahshua the Messiah, see, he is... Um, um, uh, uh, hung on the cross in Golgotha, a place of the mind, just like he's dead, see, and buried in the place of the mind, see, well, that's where he's picked us up, see, is we've got to be resurrected in the mind. So you got death, burial, resurrection in the mind, and that's where we've got to be resurrected, not from a physical standpoint, but spiritually, we've got to see Yahshua. You got the children of Israel in the migration, they got to get out of Egypt, they got to kill a lamb, death, they're buried in the, in the Red Sea burial, and then uh, they resurrect on the other side or in, in the wilderness of Sinai, death, burial, resurrection. Point out Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection. You've got the uh, uh, tabernacle pattern. See, you've got, they offered up a sacrifice on that altar. That sacrifice had to die so that the sinner wouldn't. And it's just like when you eat, something has to die so that you can live. Something has to die so that the sinner can live. That's point out Yahshua the Messiah, death. That sacrifice had to be buried in that labor. And then um, they poured oil over the priest's garments, um, ran down over the priest um, to signify that the Holy Spirit was upon him so that he could resurrect or minister throughout the tabernacle. Death, burial, resurrection. Then you got Yahshua the Messiah. You'll find out that um, um, uh, in John, how that... Uh, uh, he said, the Lamb of Yahweh that taketh away the sin of the world. Well, down through the scriptures, the Lamb had to die. That was a death sentence. He's buried in the River Jordan in the baptism burial. And then uh, he uh, resurrected into the wilderness of Sinai to be tested of the devil. Death, burial, resurrection, Yahshua and his baptism and ministry. Um, then you have um, uh, um, down here at the bottom with Yahshua the Messiah and his death, burial, resurrection. That's when he goes through his actual death, burial, resurrection. See, now this gospel is how that how Yahshua went through his death, burial, resurrection according to the scriptures. And we just showed you a few examples of how he did it, see. Um, and he actually goes through that death, burial, resurrection. And you'll find out that he was resurrected for 40 days, see, um, in the wilderness. Or not the wilderness, actually. Um, and and uh, um, ministered to the people. See, it sends unto the Father. Then 10 days later, um, that Holy Spirit was poured upon the Jews, and you've got Pentecost, and, the, and the, they are resurrected. Then seven years later, the Gentiles, um, they receive their uh, Pentecost or that Holy Spirit, see, or they're out of that death-like state, see. But Yash was the firstborn that resurrected, see, and now we can be resurrected. But it's through the preaching of this great gospel, and that's what Paul pointed out in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, how that this gospel has the power to save a soul. And that's why it's so important to come to class and hear this great gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. I appreciate the opportunity. I hope I help somebody. And um, I do appreciate the time um, to testify to the things that I've learned about Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Rob Faulkner. For our next speaker, we'd like to call on Dr. Patrick Latortu from the Chicago Northside class. If you're talking, Patrick, you're on mute.
Glad to be there. I think he might have dropped off. All right. For our next speaker, we'd like to call on Dr. Allison Snyder from the Arcport New York class. Good evening, everyone. I'm just moving to a uh, quieter place real quick. I don't know where Patrick is, but I am awfully disappointed that he disappeared. <laughs> 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 um, I am happy and glad to be here tonight, uh, as always, to be part of any of these classes. And um, if we actually could go, if it's not a pain, can we go to the aims real quick? Um, first aim, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exist. Okay, perfect. That's the exact aim that I wanted to get. So we are here, and every time we come to one of these classes, we have certain goals or aims that we, when we're preaching and when we're teaching, that we're trying to make happen. And so, you know, Rob was, was getting all these things that can be proven. And the reason he was doing those things is because we're here to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. And thank you. That was, that was the only one <laughs> that I wanted to get. I apologize, but it's nice. It's, it's nice to actually see these things for ourselves so that we have those witnesses and so um, if you don't mind going actually to the green chart, um, I actually, I had a conversation with my sister tonight and she was saying to me, uh, we ended up getting into a religion talk and she said to me, there are some things about um, some of the stories in the Bible that just don't make any sense. And I said, okay, well now, now you got to give me an example. <laughs> now you have to give me an example. And she went to Noah and she just said, I don't understand how they'd get all the animals in the ark. <laughs> okay. And so I had you pull up this screen chart. And if you could um, zoom in on that metamorphosis of the butterfly this was what I used as a witness because what we're coming, when we come in here, we should have witnesses to go along with what we're going to preach and what we're going to teach about Yahweh. We're not just talking for the sake of talking. We're here to teach you something so that you can see Yahweh as he truly is and actually exists. Okay. And so you've got this metamorphosis of a butterfly and we are so blessed to actually be in a place where we get to see this every single year. And so every single, uh, around August to September, October, we have, and sometimes even into November, depending on the, the season and how um, warm that fall is, we get to see this metamorphosis. And it's, it's really the most spectacular thing to see. And so what you have is you have that egg. And then once that egg is hatched, you have that caterpillar. And that caterpillar, I'm, I can't quite explain to you how tiny that caterpillar is. But if you were to take your pinky nail, the span across, it's, it's smaller than, it's smaller than my pinky nail is small, but it's tiny. And so going up to look for those, like you can't find them, but the amount that they grow in such a small time is astounding. They, all they do, those caterpillars, all they do is they eat and eat and eat and eat the entire time that they're in that stage. And um, if we can get, uh, if you don't mind getting for me, Oh, man, I'm, I'm so bad with scriptures. 
Isaiah 28.9. Is that where we're weaned from the milk? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I want. <laughs> Isaiah 28 and 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Okay, and just stop for one moment, if you don't mind, and I apologize for interrupting. It's, I mean, I tell my kids don't do it all the time, but in class, it's just, but it says, whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Okay, someone, someone's going to learn something. Okay, keep going. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Okay, and I don't want you to have to switch charts because I want to stay on this metamorphosis of this butterfly. But the weaning of the milk and being drawn from the breast is being taken out of that old covenant, okay? And so you, you want to get up off of those carnal, carnal things and grow. You don't want to get stuck on them. It's good to know them. And it's, you, you want to know all the things that, that are back there. But eventually, you want to leave them and, um, goodness, a word is escaping, a good word is escaping me. But you want to graduate, I guess, for a better term of, or a better term, you want to graduate to something else. And so you've got that butterfly, or the butterfly, not butterfly yet. You've got that caterpillar. He's just eating and eating and eating, and he's eating milkweed, okay? He's bound to the earth. And then you can kind of see it on this chart. He's striped, okay? They're striped. They have black stripes down them. They're black, white, and yellow stripes. They're, they're absolutely beautiful. And so you've got them being striped, like Yahshua was striped, okay? And there's, there's so many beautiful correlations that you can run with it. But after they eat and eat and eat, you know, I, I think everyone has read The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And after that Very Hungry Caterpillar is done eating, he hangs upside down and it's going to go into a chrysalis. Now, when a monarch caterpillar hangs, and if you've never seen this, look it up look up some videos it's amazing it hangs in a j okay it hangs up by its tail and by its silk it spins some silk and it hangs up and it's hung in a letter j and that is about the only j naturally in the creation that i think that i have ever seen and so it's hanging there in a J. And while it's hanging in that J position, it looks like it is dying. Okay. It's vivid colors of that white, yellow, and the black stays. But those other colors become very blue. He becomes very blue and kind of swollen looking. And so he, be he looks bruised. Okay. So you've got that, that death and you've got them being striped and you've got him looking bruised and He's, he's in a, I mean, when we first brought, we always bring a few pet caterpillars into the house for the kids to actually see the whole process because it's just so amazing. And so the first time we did it, I was completely convinced because he hangs like that for a while that I killed him. But <laughs> what he does is right before he takes off that flesh, he straightens up. Like, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating it. He very, he gets very straight in a straight line. And then that flesh peels off of him and he goes into his chrysalis, which is inside of him. Okay. And so when he's in that chrysalis, he is got, um, a golden crown. They actually have, and I, I don't know how to point to it, but on the upper portion of that chrysalis, there actually is a line of gold dots. It's so pretty. Okay. And it goes, that also goes through it. It's black and then it becomes transparent and you can see what's going on inside. You can see the change. Okay. You can, it's, it's so cool. <laughs> um, and so what happens is it's buried 
inside that chrysalis and it will resurrect out as a butterfly, which we all know that a butterfly is not earthbound and it lives, it, it flies. Okay. And so that J, I want to just go back to that J real quick when it's hanging in the J, cause I never quite explained that. Um, when it's hanging in a J, it's leaving that earthbound state. And so it's hung in that J. And when some of us, I, I can't say all of us, when some of us came into this class, we believed in that name, Jesus. But when we gave up that name, Jesus, and for some of us, it took a while. I can say for me, it took a while being in class and being taught these things. It took me a while to leave that old way and those carnal thoughts and all that stuff and straighten out and be able to transform into a new creature, okay? And that's exactly what that butterfly does, is transforms into a new creature. And it's no longer having to live earthbound, okay? And that's, that's what we want with ourselves, is to no longer be bound to this earth plane. And um, so back to what I was saying with my sister is she was, she was saying, I don't understand how the animals got in the ark. And so if you take that caterpillar or that butterfly, okay, you've got them in Mexico right now. And eventually here, they're going to start to migrate. And those butterflies that are born in Mexico didn't migrate. Okay. That's a whole new generation of butterflies. That's going to, migrate. They know exactly where to go. And then there'll be a second generation born. And that, that generation is going to migrate a little bit more north. And then a third generation is going to be born and they're going to migrate a little bit more north. And that's the butterflies that we have up here. And that's, they come and they lay their eggs. And then that fourth generation is born. And that fourth generation, and again, I'm going to point out they have never done this before. They've never done this process, but they know exactly what they're doing. That butterfly knows exactly how to get to Mexico. If you spin me around and put me out on a road and tell me to go to Texas, I don't know, like, I'm not going to get there. I'm just not. But a tiny butterfly is able to get all the way back to Mexico. It's amazing. <laughs> and if... Yahweh can make a, a butterfly, one butterfly every single year, every single year. If he can make that butterfly go from New York all the way to Mexico, he surely can get animals on an ark. And you've got the birds that migrate. You've got whales that migrate. All of them, there's all sorts of animals that migrate that can show you that power of that spirit. And it's, it's, it's so beautiful to see that. And so can we minimize that? And I got to think, can we go to the elementary chart again, please? I know it's, it's hard to, to get all these, <laughs> these things going at once. Thank you. I appreciate it. Debbie. So you've got just this these things that we can see out in the earth that show forth the power of that spirit. And Rob did an amazing job running through this and going through that death, burial, resurrection to show the power of that spirit. And so I think that what I'm going to do is just keep going on with that. And then I will take my seat and let someone else get up. Um, but you've got on this chart, this chart is fantastic but you've got here just a whole bunch of different events that took place and so I think I'm trying to decide what line I want to run here if I want to keep going with the death burial resurrection that gospel of the messiah or if I want to do uh the blood water spirit um but I think just because I want to show that power I think that I'm going to go with the death, burial, resurrection, because there is so much power in that resurrection. And it goes along with the butterfly. Oh, and actually, I didn't get into that. I didn't get into the blood, water, spirit of the butterfly. But real quick, 
you've got that butterfly or the caterpillar when it's in that chrysalis and it comes out of the chrysalis, the butterfly hangs and its wings are withered up because it's been, you know, confined into that space of that chrysalis. But as it dries its wings, its wings will expand as it dries and water if you actually, we've done it many times. I have pictures. If you don't believe me, feel free to email me and I'll email you all the pictures you could ever dream of. But uh, if you put a paper towel underneath a butterfly while it's drying, there will be water and there also will be blood. There will be a drop or two of blood that is in that water as well. So you've got that blood, water, and then you've got that spirit or it flying away. Okay. So it's, I guess I could do the blood water spirit is I just got that with the butterfly. So we'll, <laughs> we'll go with that blood water spirit just cause I just did it. And so you've got in that tabernacle, you've got down there on the altar of bra the brazen altar of sin offering. You've got, it says right in that cloud, it says blood. I believe it says blood. <laughs> but you've got a sacrifice that takes place there. And so you've got, there's also four horns on there, which there's blood on those four horns, okay? So if you go over to Adam, you've got his blood, okay? <clears throat> Adam's death puts blood on the four corners of the earth, okay? His, his, his death is the death of all men after him, okay? So you've got blood there with Adam. You go over to Noah and he is given a vision that there's going to be a flood. There's going to be destruction. And so he is going to preach that that's happening. And I'm not going to make you read it. But in Ezekiel, if you go to Ezekiel, it's going to tell you about getting the blood off of your head and putting it onto the heads of others. So once he speaks that word of what's going to happen, he's automatically taking the blood off of his head and putting it on the heads of others because they have a chance to do something once they've heard, hey, there's going to be a flood. You're going to want to get on the ark. You can either say, okay, crazy man, or you can say, all right, let's do this thing. <laughs> okay. But he's given them a chance right there. Okay, so he's taking the blood. So that's the blood there. You've got Abraham and Isaac. You've got that ram caught in the thicket, which is going to become the sacrifice in the place of Isaac there. You've got the children of Israel down there in Egypt, and you have them sacrifice a lamb. And that lamb's blood is going to be placed on the four. And we already I, we just showed it in the tabernacle. You've got those four points of blood. You've got the four points of blood that you've got the two side posts, you've got the upper door post, and then you've got that basin down at the bottom with blood in it. And then you've got, um, if you don't mind moving over, unless I'm zoomed in, which I could be. Thank you. You can keep going. You've got the um, chart with Yahshua. Uh, yes. Yep. That's the one. You've got that chart with Yahshua, and he is called by John, the Lamb of Yahweh, okay? And any time back there, okay, being called the Lamb of Yahweh, that's going to signify that there's going to be blood, okay? There's going to be a death. And then, uh, actually, if you don't mind getting that first John 5 and 7, First John five and seven King James Version. Um, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Mm -hmm. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. Okay, so you've got that blood, water, spirit bearing witness in the earth to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so you've got blood there. And then if you go down, you've got the actual 
death, burial, and resurrection of Joshua. And we know that there were four points of blood. You've got the hands, the feet, and then the crown of thorns. Okay, so you've got four points of blood there. You go over to the Pentecost chart or the Pentecost plates, and you've got Joshua telling the disciples there at that last supper that he is the blood or yeah he's and he's pointing this is the blood pointing to himself okay and then you've got Sto or Stephen being stoned there's going to be blood there you have James being beheaded um obviously going to be some blood there and then if you move on I want to say it's the apostasy plate but I'm not positive okay yep you've got in the churches you have them giving that cup of blood for them to drink okay and so then if we can go back up i won't go backwards um with the water but you've got in that tabernacle you've got that brazen laver which you've got that water in okay and so if you go over to adam by the sweat or sweat of thy face um, so you've got sweat, water, Noah, you've obviously have, there's going to be water with Noah. You have a vision of there's going to be water with Abraham. Okay. Abraham at this, I mean, he was an old man. He was an old man when Isaac was conceived. He's an old man climbing a mountain. Okay. There's going to be sweat. They're carrying things up with them. And then I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that if you're sacrificing your child, you're going to be crying. Okay. There's tears as well. So you've got that water there. You've got them in Egypt. You have them crossing through that Red Sea. Okay. Water, clearly water. And it's, it is so amazing how Yahweh has just laid this as plain as plain can be. And these are this is the chart that we're looking at and it has these things out but you can take this blood water spirit and get somewhere else in that bible that's not on this chart and you can run it there too okay you can run it with joseph you can run it with dan you can run it <laughs> yahweh has put it there for a reason to show that power of that death burial resurrection of yahshua the messiah okay um so we talked about the water in the tabernacle already. You've got Joshua being baptized in water, okay? And then we already talked about that blood, water, spirit being the witnesses. You have, um, with Joshua's actual death, burial, resurrection, you have him being pierced in the side and out comes blood and water, okay? You have them washing their feet in water, or Yahshua washing their feet in water. You have um, Philip baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch in water. You have Peter saying, can any man forbid water? Okay. And then on the other plate, it's the apostasy plate. You've got them still to this day baptizing in water. Okay. And Rob did a good job getting into, you know, getting rid of those carnal ways of thought. But then if we go back up, okay, we're going to just run that blood, water, spirit. Because it's just, it's, it's just so beautiful. But you've got in that tabernacle, you've got that horn of holy anointing oil being poured upon that high priest. So that high priest can go up and work perfectly because he's being anointed by that spirit. Okay, that's that's what that is signifying is when he's brought in as the new high priest, he's going to be anointed by that spirit. Okay, and so you've got um, spirit with um, Adam over there. You have the spirit blocking the way back into the garden. You have Michael there. Okay, that's going to signify the spirit. You've got spirit closing the door to that ark. Once they're in there, you've got the spirit staying Abraham's hand and stopping him from, from what he was sacrificing his son. You've got the spirit leading them in a cloud. Well, you have Joshua down or Joshua down there too, but you have that spirit leading them 
out of Egypt and into the wilderness of Sinai. And I think I'm going to go back there just for a quick second after we're done with this. Okay. And then you've got that spirit. You've got yeah, or John saying, um, oh goodness, you better get that. Uh, Matthew 3, where the dove descends. Because I can never, I never can get the wording quite right. This one. The spirit descending like a dove, I want to say is the wording of it. But Yes, that's Matthew 3 and 16. And Yahshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the spirit of Elohim descending like the dove and lighting upon him. Okay, so you've even got on and this chart. Of... Oh, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> I totally interrupted you. But you've got that, you've got that dove okay. above Yahshua's head signifying that spirit. Okay. Um, and then if you go down, you've got with that death, burial, resurrection, you have that spirit resurrecting, okay? Then you've got, um, I mean, after that, it's the spirit of Yahshua. <laughs> you've got the pe Pentecost on that next plate. Um, and I'm trying to picture the plates down there. You've got those who, the persecution chart, you've got those who have that spirit being persecuted, okay? And so those, those men are, they're, you know, clearly, if you have people being stoned and beheaded for teaching, you know, there's going to be the persecution of those people. And then you've got the Gentiles having that spirit um, poured down upon them. And you've got that um, raven down here, uh, which is going to signify the unrighteous spirit. Okay. But then if you go up, you've got that way, the truth, the life of that true spirit that's going to lead you onto heaven. And if you actually don't mind going back to that uh, plate with the children of Israel, I will go back there and then I will actually take my seat. But when we're, we're looking at these, we're not looking at Moses or Noah and how cool, like, man, Noah had to be a really great carpenter because he built a huge ark. No, 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 no. <laughs> if that's what you're looking at, you clearly missed the boat, okay? We're looking at that power of that spirit within them to do these things, okay? And it's, it's so amazing when you actually see what these these events were and how powerful that spirit truly is. And we can see those things out in the earth plane with the seasons changing. You see that death, burial, resurrection. And with what we just talked about with the butterfly, you see that blood, water, spirit, death, burial, resurrection. You see it within your own body. Okay. You've got that. Um, when you go to the, if you go to the hospital and they're going to check your fluids, they're going to check your blood. And they're going to check to make sure you're breathing, okay? They're going to check your breathing and make sure that your oxygen level is good, okay? So, the, I mean, just within yourself, without those things, that blood, water, spirit, you, there's no life, <laughs> okay? And so I just want to go back to this migratory pattern plate real quick because it's, it's just... For me, one of the most beautiful examples of, of taking that tabernacle and just putting it, and it's, it's so nice too, because they're side by side, but we went through that blood and that water, and you've got that spirit that leads them out. And when they're down in Egypt, it wasn't a picnic for them. It was, they were, they were slaves. Okay, <laughs> not good times. And five minutes. five minutes. Okay, thank you. And down there, what their punishment was when they didn't do that, they, they would beat their souls at the bottom of their feet. They'd beat their souls. Okay, and that's just signifying that they were beating their souls inside. 
Okay. And so you've got them go with that blood. You've got them going through the water led by the spirit. And then they get into the wilderness of Sinai. Okay. And to get into that holy place, you had to go through a door. Okay. That Red Sea opening up was a door. Okay. You come into that holy place. You've got light. You've got a table of shoe bread or sustenance. You've got that altar of incense. Okay. When you're over there in the wilderness of Sinai, you have that pillar of a cloud leading them. And it is a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. They are always in light. And there are verses for every single one of these things. Okay. I'm again, if you need any of them, let me know. I'll have to look them up, but I can let you know. But you've got that table of shoe bread. You have it raining manna in the wilderness of Sinai while they're there. Okay. You've got that altar of incense, which was where the priests interceded for the people. And if you actually look at the tabernacle in the wilderness of Sinai, you see the camps around. That's who he's interceding for, that high priest. Okay. And you've got Noah or Noah. See? The spirit just works in them all. I forget their names sometimes. Um, you've got Moses interceding for the people there in the wilderness of Sinai. He's going up to the mountain and actually talking with Yahweh and then coming back and telling them things. And then they go up into the holy or the most holy place or Canaan's land. So in the um, tabernacle, they go through that veil. Okay. So that's, you've got that river Jordan there. And then they go up into Canaan's land or the holy place or the most holy place. And in the most holy place, there is peace. And Joshua went up into Canaan's land and he fought all the battles for the people there, everything and gave them all they could. And I would just encourage everyone to keep coming back to class. Um, I hope you got something out of that and hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sorry about that. I'm trying to get the charge back up. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Allison Snyder. For our next speaker, we'd like to call on Dr. Jamie O'Dyer. Good evening, class. Good evening. I enjoyed the previous speakers. Um, wow. <laughs> it's indeed an honor and a privilege to testify some things that I learned uh, being in this class um, that I've received from Yasin Messiah. First of all, this is a school and not a church. And we say this school is a product of a divine vision and revelation given from our founder, given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley, by way of Yahweh himself. This is the same Yahweh that the previous speaker talked about had revealed himself to Moses and through the prophets and also John the Revelator that's written throughout the uh, Bible. So what you see um, on these charts that we have in front of you are is a pictorial illustration of your Bible by a pattern by a pattern and by a pattern. And that's what the previous speakers were talking about, uh, this pattern. So the pattern that we're talking about is Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe. Um, could you get me the, oh, it's already right there. And that's, the, that's what this um, chart is titled. Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe. Where you see, <clears throat> Um, the children of Israel down in Egypt being delivered by the, by Yahweh through the hand of Moses. Hold on, let me pull this chart up right quick because I got the small charts here at the house. Okay, here we go. By Yahweh to Canaan land, which is a promised land or a representation of the kingdom that Yahshua promised um, that we will be a part of. And I enjoyed the previous speakers. They covered the first aim and also the witnesses or the gospel as we the witnesses of the gospel as pertaining to your salvation. Um, 
Go ahead and pick up First John 5 and 7. First John 5 and 7. Mm-hmm. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, okay. and the... For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, Go ahead. and the Holy Spirit. And these and three Holy... are one. And these three are one. A single entity. But we say this: these three are one. The Father whose name is Yahweh. The title alone, the Father, is just a title. So the Father has a name. His name is Yahweh. The Word or Son is Elohim. The Holy Spirit has a name as well. Pick up John 14 and uh, I think that's John 14, 26. Yeah. Give me John 14, 26 right quick. John 14 and 26. Yeah, read that for me. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay, it starts out, um, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. If you have a red letter edition of the Bible, it said the letters of the words in red are from the Savior, which his name is Yahshua the Messiah. It says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Whom, read, go ahead and read. Whom the read. Father will send in my name. Ah, the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father, which is Yahweh, We'll send in the name of Yahshua. That's who's doing the speaking. Yahshua. That's the name of the Holy Spirit. And I've had a, a conversation with a Jehovah's Witness. And he said to me that the Holy Spirit doesn't have a name. But coming down to this school, this particular school, and partaking in this gospel given from the creator himself explains himself and explains who the Holy Spirit is and what the mission of the Holy Spirit is for your salvation. So this is Yahshua. The name of the Holy Spirit is Yahshua. The phrase the Holy Spirit is a title. You don't put the in front of a proper name. Holy Spirit is a title. Holy Spirit has a name, Yahshua. Son has a name, Yahshua. Elohim is a divine title which Yahweh had given out to himself. And Elohim's name is Yahshua. All right, so continue reading, please. He shall teach you all things. Now, this is the one that teaches and this school and brings all things to your remembrance whatsoever the Father, or Yahshua, has said unto you. So if Yahshua hadn't said anything unto you, he can't bring nothing back to your remembrance. Or if he hasn't taught you anything, he can't bring <laughs> anything back to your remembrance. Go back to uh, 1 John 5 and 7. Okay. 1 John 5 and 7. Mm -hmm. There are three, for there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Yahweh, Elham, Yahshua, these three are one. Go ahead. And there are three that bear witness in earth. Oh, I want you to hold that thought and get me Romans 1, 19 and 20, because the father is spirit. The word is spirit and the Holy Spirit is spirit. And we don't have any spirit detectors to identify, see, smell, touch, taste or uh, feel spirit. But there's go ahead, read for me. Romans 1 19, because that which may be known of Yahweh uh -oh. is manifest. Because that which may be known of Yahweh, who is spirit, is what? Is manifest in them. Manifest in them, read. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. Uh oh, because Yahweh has showed it unto them. And we've been talking about. This is a divine vision and revelation <laughs> given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, and he illustrated it for us so we can see the vision that he saw and the vision Moses saw and the vision John saw. Read. For the invisible things of him. Spirit is invisible. For the invisible things of Yahweh. From the creation of the world. From the creation of the world now. 
previous speakers have been talking about this pattern. They be talking about the creation. The first speaker talked about the earth and how it was created in chaos. Do you see the first circle at the top of these eight circles? It is it, it reads in Genesis, and the earth was without form and void of life, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That's the way Genesis reads. First speaker talked about that, and the waters were over the earth. So you still have your witness, and we're going to read about the witness again as the third speaker talked about. <laughs> the third speaker talked about the water, one of those witnesses. First speaker talked about the witness of water, too. So we got water as your witness. Then you got spirit moving upon the face of the waters, or the spirit of the dove moved upon the face of the water. So they got the spirit. Okay, read. From the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Being understood by the things that are made. Now, you might say, oh, you skipped some. You skipped the blood part. Well, yeah and no. So we're going to pick that up. Um, what's that scripture from the lamb slain from the foundation of the world? Why don't you pick that John up? 1 and 29. Yeah, grab that for me. The next day, John seeth Yahshua coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh. Which uh, taketh, the Lamb of Yahweh, which does what? Taketh away the sin of the world. Taketh away the sin of the world. Um, uh, The other scripture, names written in the book. That might be Revelation. Revelation. Um, yep. Eight. Um, 12 and 8. 12 and 8. Yep. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, first we could talk about the foundation of the world. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about this inner, inorganic earth covered with water without form of void. Yahshua was slain before that. So there's your death or your blood principle. So you, now you got blood, water, and the spirit moved across the face of the waters. Uh-oh, those are our witnesses. Uh, Doc, you done reading in um, uh, 1 John 5 and 7? Oh, um, no, Romans. Romans. Right We're going to wrap up Romans, then go back to 1 John. Go ahead. Romans mm -hmm. 1 and 20. Yep. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. For the invisible yeah. things of him. From the creation of the world are clearly seeing being what? Understood. Understood. By the things that are made. The things that are made. And our third speaker talked about the things that are made. The creation. She talked about the butterfly. The death, burial, resurrection of the butterfly. That's a thing that we understand pointing to Yahshua the Messiah. Now that's how we understand the gospel, which the second speaker talked about. That's the first Corinthians, how the Messiah died, was buried and resurrected again the third day, according to the scriptures. Got that with the butterfly. We got that with the seasons. Uh, pull up that green chart for me. The uh, what does that chart say? What's the title of that chart? The creator image by his creation. Hey, doesn't that sound like Romans 119 to 20? Shouldn't that be up there somewhere? Hmm. It should be up there on that chart somewhere. So we got a whole chart based on that going by a pattern. Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe, which transformed himself into the intangible tabernacle, which has a most holy place, holy place, and caught round about, which he had Moses build tangible, something you can touch, see, feel, smell, and look at and handle in the wilderness. Now, this these are the things that's being understood, Yahweh being invisible, this tabernacle pattern, you can understand Yahweh by the things that are made. He had Moses make this tabernacle. Most holy place, holy place, court round about. Father, word, Holy Spirit, these three are one. One spirit, one tabernacle. We have witnesses in that tabernacle. And we'll get to those in a second. The previous speaker just talked about that. But I want you to go over and finish 
first John 5 and 7. For him, uh, Roman, uh, even his eternal power and supernal nature so that they are without excuse. Even his eternal power, Yahweh's all, oh man, let me tell you this story. I, 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 I ain't sidebarred in a while, but I'm gonna tell you this briefly. So same guy, Jehovah's Witness, I'm talking to him. And we got to a point where he tells me, he says, hey, uh, why do you think, he, it was to the point where God didn't control the devil and the devil was his own person. First of all, I said, okay, so where did everything come from? He said, everything came from, he said, Jehovah, I said, name Yahweh. Everything came from Yahweh, including who? Including the devil. Okay, so you don't think Yahweh has control over the devil and the devil just out there running out random. Well, he wouldn't have all this bad stuff to happen. What do you consider bad? Now, we can go into the law, into the prophecy and talk about these things you consider bad, but it's in the purpose of Yahweh. He had them go up in the Canaan land. We start with this. We can go down to Egypt. Go down to Egypt, come through the Red Sea, and Yahweh closed the, the Red Sea on Pharaoh. Is that good or bad? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> then you got him. Matter of fact, we in the wilderness and Yahweh put a plague on them for this being dis disobedient to Yahweh, the commandments. Is that good or bad? <laughs> now you want to go through. Now let's go to Canaan land. Let's go to Canaan land. They couldn't just walk up in there and be like, hey, this is ours. They had to fight for that for that land. They had to fight down there in the wilderness, too. And they had to kill a bunch of people. And a bunch of people died in the wilderness. Is that good or bad? It's the purpose of Yahweh. That's what he kept left out because he don't know the purpose of Yahweh. Now, that goes according to the pattern as well. Death, burial, resurrected. Some had to die for somebody to live. They had to sacrifice that lamb down there in Egypt. They had to be buried to and through the Red Sea. And they resurrected in the wilderness. Goes by the pattern. Goes by the art. And in the prophecy, you got those judges through judges. You got them overtaking them kingdoms and losing to them kingdoms. Slaughtering people and being slaughtered. All through the dictates of Yahweh. Now, on that same line, he says to me, well, we got a choice and we can do whatever we want to do and how we want to do it. You think God has the power to know what we're doing before we do it. I was like, yep. Um, there's a scripture talking about, uh, it talks about um, uh, the man's uh, habitation, how long he going to live. Um, you probably can find it. But anyway, yeah, grab that. So as we were talking, I says this. I say, hey, man, so you mean to tell me that God going to wait Till you get in trouble to think of a way out to get you to, to, to save you. He gonna wait all with you get in trouble and then come up with this. Oh, 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 wait a minute. I forgot to do that. Uh, uh, let me find a way out. That's not the case. Henceforth, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That's your savior. That's the one that saves you. <laughs> that died for you so you can be saved. And I was like, if my guy got to come up with a, a plan B to save me because he didn't know or foreordain anything, then I I can't worship your God. Your God is pretty weak. My God, my L is all knowing, all powerful. <laughs> and that's the power in him. So I, I can't, no, nah, you, you got a part time God. He ain't as powerful as you say he is. So. Go ahead and read Acts, that for me. Acts 17, 26. Read. And hath made of one blood all nations of men. Uh-oh. One blood. There's another witness. All nations of men. Read. For to dwell on all the face of the earth. To dwell on all the face of the earth. By the pattern. Blood and the witnesses. Read. And hath determined the times before appointed. Oh, wait a minute. 
So it's saying that he knew <laughs> you before you was appointed and what you're going to do. We, he knew how long you're going to live, what you're going to do, appointed the times before and the you. Bounds, and, and the, the bounds, bounds of their habitation. And the bounds of their habitation. How long you going to live? If you saying God don't know that, then your God has no power. And that ain't the God I served. I had to tell, I had to do, tell the dude straight up. That ain't the one I served. <laughs> that ain't the one. Um, so go ahead and finish First John 5 and 7. Uh, first John 5 and 7. Well, First John 5 and 8. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit. Now, there are three that bear witness in the earth, still along, along the lines of Romans 1, 19 and 20. We have the spirit. What else? And the water. And the water. And what else? And the blood. And the blood. Read. And these three agree in one. And these three agree in one. Ah, now check this out. We was in class one day and, and I heard from the floor that you go out, you, you go out the same way you come in, something like that. Or you come in the same way you go out. Something like that. In short, you're born by blood, water, and spirit. When you come out the womb, you see that little baby down there? That baby, when, it's come, when it comes out the womb, it's going to be, well, before, there's going to be a water. It's in my water break. You know, I, I ain't went through it yet. <laughs> I haven't gone through it yet, but I heard <laughs> That's the way it go. I heard. So you got to show water. <laughs> then I seen on TV, because <laughs> I ain't been there yet. You see the baby come out the womb, there's blood. And then that baby, they try to, the baby ain't, ain't, ain't doing nothing. They ain't moving. So they say the doctor got to wake the baby up. So they used to they used to spank the baby. Now they kind of shake the baby around and clean out the, the, the mouth and the nostrils so they can inhale that spirit. You can hear... <sighs> So you have man coming in by blood, water, and spirit. Those witnesses. And they have to agree in one. If none of those things happened, that baby wouldn't, that baby wouldn't survive. That baby wouldn't make it. And each and every one of these men that are on the earth, including the, the creatures, have blood, water, and spirit in them. Your body, as the, as, the, as the second speaker said, I think it was second speaker, first speaker, first speaker said is 75% water. If you have a water deficiency, you will have a problem and you can die. They will have to put water in you. You'll be very dehydrated. I had a kidney problem one time because I wasn't drinking enough water and I was taking in too much protein. I could have died and been on dialysis. Blood and water. Had that happened, I'd have lost the spirit. <laughs> Same way. You come in, you got to go out by blood, water, spirit. Same way. You have those witnesses. And they have to agree in one. Continue reading. Ninth verse. If we mm -hmm. receive the witness of men, the witness of Yahweh is greater. Uh-oh. If we receive the witness of men, blood, water, and spirit, how uh, they agree on one and every man. The witness of Yahweh is greater. Why is that? For this is the witness of Yahweh, which he hath testified of his son. For this is the witness of Yahweh, which he had testified to his son. Give me um, Deuteronomy 6. No, I didn't. Um, I am my father one. That's John 10 and... 10 and 9. Matter of fact, it should be right there. Oh, there it is. John 10 and 9. Go ahead. That's the I am the door. No, um, John, the other one. I am my father, I want. Maybe John 10 and 30? John 10 and 30. Yeah, I pulled that one right off the. Mm -hmm. John 10 and 30. Uh -huh. I and my father are one. I and my father are one. Um, also get uh, John one and one. John one and one. 
Yep. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. In the beginning was the word. This is the same word that appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the rest of the prophets. And Moses as Elohim, the word or son. That's the word. We're not talking about this Bible because this Bible is a bunch of words and people have uh, um, misinterpreted the this words. This word is a single word. I ain't supposed to say that. <laughs> this word <laughs> misinterpreted this word, but this is not the words that he's talking about. He's talking about himself. Yahweh Elohim whose name is Yahshua. And the word that appeared out to them saying, the same word was with Yahweh, and it was Yahweh, showing that unity. Read. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. Read. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Henceforth, going back to the title of that chart, Elohim, the archetype, original pattern of the universe. Without him, Elohim was not anything made that was made. Everything goes according to that pattern. Everything. And nothing escapes the pattern as in the moderation. So let's talk about the man some more. Uh, pick up um, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple? First Corinthians six and nineteen. Uh -huh. Right. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of Yahweh, and ye are and not. Ye are not your own. Going right back to the dude, the Jehovah Witness dude. Ye are not your own. So you ain't got your own free will. You ain't got your own choices. You ain't got your own whatever you think you own. Because it ain't yours. Period. For ye are bought with a price. For you are bought with a price. And what is that price? Go ahead. I'll tell you what the Th price is. Go ahead. Therefore glorify Yahweh in your body and mm. in your spirit which are Yahweh's. Now it said, glorify Yahweh in your body and your spirit, which are his. Now, these are the ones that are written in the book of life of the land slain from the foundation of the world that received the Holy Spirit. What? You can say it like, look, John, what? Know ye body. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you. Now, he, we could talk about the Holy Spirit, how he said, and I'm put my spirit in your, in your, in your, um, put my laws in your heart. You put them on laws in your mind and write them in your heart. And you should be my Elohim. I should be your Elohim. You should be my people. Same people we talking about. But this is the temple following the temple of himself, which is made Father, Word, Holy Spirit. These three are one, which goes according to the pattern, most holy place, holy place, called round about, which goes according to Solomon's temple, which is the oracle sanctuary and porch, which goes according to the art, which is Upper deck, middle deck, lower deck, which goes according to the let us make man, us being Elohim, making man in his image and according to his likeness, man having spirit, soul and body made in the likeness of a tabernacle pattern, having a head cavity, which is like your most holy place, a chest cavity, which is like your holy place and an abdominal cavity, which is like the court roundabout. And it also has. A hand, forearm, and upper arm. He has two arms and two legs, a foot, calf, and a thigh, foot, calf, and a thigh, which are 12 members that move the tabernacle around the wilderness. We talk about Moses. That goes according to the pattern. You also have 12 disciples. When he moved as the head, they moved. And they followed that cloud. We're going back to Moses, followed that cloud. That pillar of cloud that led them to and through the Red Sea and also through the wilderness. Hmm, that goes by a pattern. <laughs> so, um, also, you have the earth being created, crust, mantle, and core. It's one earth. Five minutes. Also, Five minutes. And it's also, you got a tree, roots, trunk, and branches. One tree. 
And I was going to talk about the death, burial, and resurrection in the season. So you have what we call autumn or fall, which is a death. You see the leaves falling off the trees. It, 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 you could look at the trees and they seem, they appear to not have any life in them. They're barren, no life. Then, depending on which state you're in, you may get snow or flooding rain, which is burying things underneath it. Then you get, now that's in the winter, then you get the spring where you start seeing the buds on the trees. You start seeing the grass come out of the ground. You start seeing the buds of, on the flowers and the branches. You start seeing bass and crappie and brim start to spawn and have babies or show life or or reproduce and give life and you see the birds um coming back and building nests and giving life so the next couple months it goes into fruition or everything is fully grown until it's complete stage in the summer so you got death burial resurrection and ascension with the seasons going according to the gospel first corinthians 15 and 1 and also going according to the death burial and resurrection of yasha messiah and you also have those witnesses of blood water and spirit and you also have a principle of 40 and you're going to have that throughout the whole creation because they point to Yahweh Elohim, the archetype, original pattern of the universe. And you're going to have those witnesses throughout your Bible. Your Bible is just not random. Your Bible is written according to a pattern pointing to Yahshua, the Messiah, who came to fulfill the law and the prophets. But those who words like say hallelujah. 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 All right. We want to thank our visiting brother and everybody that tuned in on YouTube. Um, Dr. Bonnie Schneider in class from Artport, New York. We love you guys and love having you with us. Um, Dr. Patrick Latortu, Northside Chicago. And with that, I'd like to say, let us all bow our hearts and minds for doxology. Doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude and goes as follows. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and all time. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good class, everyone. Thank you.